bottom rock that says your name listed back rings. Um, can anyone tell me what this is at the bottom of this segment here? What you're looking at? No, that's uh, that is the lunar lander for Apollo 11. That's a piece that's still on the moon from Apollo 11. Uh, this is the external tank from the shuttle stack. You saw a replica of that back at the Western Center, so you know how big it is. And uh, then we have the wing end of the orbiter. Uh, as I said, this was the last piece they brought over here. They drove it over on a transporter and came over horizontally. When we walked in the door, all of that door would open. And um, they had to cut a slot up there for the stabilizer of the tail. That's how big it is. And remember, it was horizontal when it came in. Um, they, lift, they put a lift on it, a uh, sling, two, uh, hook, two hooks for the creams. They lifted it up off the transporter. Um, and then they removed the hook on aft. And it went vertical as well, you can see in this last photograph. Um, you can get a better look to it, the opening up here. They could not take it straight through because of the wingspan. It had to go in at an angle. Um, so if you were way up in the ceiling in the cab operating that crane, you would look down at this red circle. There's a yellow mark through the center, a yellow line through the center. And you had to align um, the tail or the stabilizer with that mark, and that's the angle it went um, through that opening. Once you got it inside, uh, you would straighten it out and lower it down to attach it to the tank. Remember this building um, built for the side of the line? Thing What's that? The so once they got the oh, orbiter yeah, yeah. inside, they only had about six inches clearance on either side. So they had people on every level, and their job was to stand and watch it about 12 hours to run the orbiter. And uh, their job was to watch as it came down and make sure it did not start to swing like a pendulum. All the doors would have been closed with no air flowing through here uh, when they were lifting that orbiter. Okay. I want to just briefly tell you um, about the thermal protection system. The vehicle mainly um, was aluminum alloy. And so the whole surface had to be covered to protect it from the heat of reentry. And I'm going to tell you about three main materials they use. On the nose, um, leading edges of the wings, and that was the hottest, um, 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. They used reinforced carbon-carbon. And then the black tiles, we have just a little over 24,000 black tiles on Atlantis. Uh, they're all different sizes and shapes depending on placement, so they each had a coat, so they knew where it went, that could withstand up to 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. When you look at Atlantis, she has about 85% of the original tiles. And uh, when you walk underneath that, they're all gray, but they started out black. They're gray from all of the re-entries. Remember, she's made 33 re-entries uh, into the atmosphere. The white area, the white is the coolest part, anywhere from 700 to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. It started out uh, with white tiles, but then they began to make um, this material they call thermal blankets. And it was um, uh, machine sewn, the material, but then we had quilters that had to finish them off. So I don't know if any of you were aware, but we did have quilters sitting around sewing parts uh, to go on the outside of the vehicle, and then um, the thermal blankets were covered with two coats of um, ceramic paint, uh, uh, ceramic, um, to protect it, just like the tiles. So that's just different materials that they used. Um, take you down here. If they had brought a platform in on top of, we have a collar transporter part in here. If they had brought a platform in, the platform, um, the top of it would be about where you would see that number three. Remember, the crawler would have backed out that door, or driven out that door, and they would have left the platform. When they stacked the shuttle, you would have been able to see the tip of the external tank um, just above that opening. Remember, the Saturn V was twice as tall. So if you turn around just a minute, we have um, three photographs here. Uh, all of these were taken in one of the high bays. And when you get ready to attach the pieces to stack, you need access to it. So you can look at all three of the photographs. You can see these uh, platforms that pull up around the vehicle. You can see people um, standing on the platforms in the different photographs. 
All of these in High Bay 3 have been removed. Everything shuttle related has been removed. And maybe the end of this year, maybe not until next year, they're going to start putting uh, new work areas in here to get ready uh, for this. This is that photograph we saw uh, in the book and underneath the crawler transporter. Uh, then that new platform and tower that we saw outside. And um, this is the part, what the, when they test this uh, in 2017, we won't have any astronauts on it yet, uh, but they're gonna send um, Orion once around the moon and return and recover and see how it perform. Probably take at least another two years to send astronauts out. Okay, I'm gonna take it around. We'll get a closer look at um, how they work. that were brought here, uh, they um, moved most everyone out. So maybe we would have 100 people at a time working in here if we had a stacking operation going on. You can see one of those um, um, cranes that I was talking about. You can see it in high bay three up at the very top of your ceiling. Um, what we have sitting over here, uh, you know, before they can start uh, building um, hardware, flight hardware, uh, they have to do a lot of run a lot of tests. They're still uh, working on developing that new naval SLS. But Orion's a little bit further along because it was part of the program that was canceled. So what you see, you can see where the NASA logo the flag is. Uh, 
largest 